Howdy! Welcome to Aspire Mountain Academy. I'm Professor Curtis, your instructor for this course in Introductory Statistics. In less than 10 minutes, this video presents the student T distribution and explains how it is like and unlike the normal distribution. Let's get started. So in the previous mini lecture, we mentioned the student T distribution. Here's what that is. So if our distribution is essentially normal, okay, then the distribution of T scores is going to be a student T distribution for all samples of size N. Now to most people, that sort of thing is not going to make a whole lot of sense, but that's the official mathematical statistical definition. Of course, since it's the official statistical definition, it makes no sense whatsoever to the way most people think. So let's look at it this way. A student t-distribution is often referred to simply as a t-distribution. Where does that name student come from? Well, the distribution was actually developed about 100 years ago, maybe a little more than 100 years ago, by an employee of the Guinness Brewery in Ireland. And this individual was actually interested in, in yields of hops that they were using to make the Guinness in the distillery. Well, the advantage of the student T distribution is that it's like a normal distribution, but it can accommodate much smaller sample sizes. So before we were talking about the central limit theorem and how we said you need to have more than 30 uh, in your sample size in order to approximate the normal distribution, well, the student T distribution can accommodate smaller sample sizes and that was perfect for the yields that they were looking at with the Guinness brewery because oftentimes you know the farmers who were supplying the hops for the distillery they were actually producing small yields and so this in this employee wanted to actually come up with a distribution that could accommodate these smaller sample sizes and he found the student T distribution and it worked great. And so it worked so great he wanted to publish his results. But because he was an employee of Guinness and knowing the way that management looked on stuff like that, he decided to publish his work under a pseudonym. And so instead of giving out his name, he just called himself student. Okay. And, and the T is just the last letter there in the word student. So student T is what the, the name of the distribution comes from because that's the name that the guy published the paper under so that he wouldn't necessarily be connected to Guinness. Uh, he didn't want to lose his job. So there's a little story background behind the student T distribution. And most of the time we simply refer to it as the T distribution. We use t distributions to find critical values denoted by t sub alpha over 2, just the same way that we found them for the critical value z scores for the normal distribution. And we calculate t scores with this equation, which you'll notice is very similar to the equation that we used to calculate a z score. The only difference being is that we've got this correction for the smaller sample size here in the denominator of our fraction. Let's look at some of the properties for the student t distribution. So it actually is slightly different in shape for different sample sizes. Okay, like the normal distribution, the student t distribution has the same general symmetric bell shape. Okay, but with smaller sizes, it's going to reflect greater variability. So you can see here in the graphic here on the right, how you've got different t distributions for different sample sizes. The larger the sample size gets, the more it approximates that normal distribution. So the lower the sample size, the more you see it towards like this blue curve here in the middle, it moves towards that. So you can see that the tails here become more elongated and the center, the peak of the distribution, actually gets lower and lower and lower. So it's very much like the normal distribution, but at the same time with some important differences. 
Now, just like the standard normal distribution, student t distribution has a mean value of zero. However, because the, the student t distribution varies with sample size, the standard deviation is going to be greater than one. This is different from the standard normal distribution, which always has a standard deviation value equal to one. As I mentioned before, as the sample size gets larger, the student t distribution gets closer and closer to that normal distribution. There's an added element here with the student t distribution it, we call degrees of freedom. So the reason why you're seeing different shapes at different sizes of the student t distribution with different sample sizes is because of this concept known as degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is simply the number of sample values that can vary after certain restrictions have been imposed on all data values. Typically, the degrees of freedom mean that uh, you're just taking one less than the sample size. Often we abbreviate the degrees of freedom with DF. And for the T distribution, all we're doing is taking one less than the sample size, and that's degrees of freedom. So if you don't completely understand this mathematical definition for degrees of freedom, it's really important that you get this definition down, that the degrees of freedom for your t distribution is going to be one less than the sample size. That brings us to the end of this mini lecture. I hope you found it helpful. You can find more mini lectures for this and other courses at aspiremountainacademy.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.